Okay. Everyone fears something. According to Michael Moore in his provocative movie Bowling for Columbine, fear is fed to U.S. citizens in all kinds of ways every day. We are violent, fear-based society. We seem to be a gullible people, believing everything the media feeds us about what we should or shouldn't be doing. Every new study makes us wonder, should we eat apples, eggs? Is cholesterol really the culprit or is it inflammation? This keeps us guessing, keeps us off balance, keeps us from thinking deeply about things. It is playing with our heads, with our minds. It makes us paralyzed in the sense that we don't know what to do. Every day something changes. What we were to fear yesterday is not what we are to fear today. Even if reports in the media were not making everyone fearful, everyone fears something. Although it may seem to the adoptee as if the rest of the world is going around being in control and not being afraid, that is not true. Except for the people intimately connected to adoptees. Most other people are not aware of adoptees' fears either. They don't wear fear on their shoulders. In her book, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, Susan Jeffers begins by talking about the fear of public speaking. She, too, believes the fear is epidemic. In our society, and we're quoting here, we fear beginnings, we fear endings, we fear changing, we fear things stuck, we fear success, we fear failure, we fear living, we fear dying. Um, and that is according to her in 1987. She talks about the non-stop little voice inside her head that kept telling her things like, don't take a chance and you might make a mistake, boy, will you be sorry, until one day she looked in the mirror at the reflection full of self-pity and said, enough. This is similar to the epiphany that Rhonda Britton had two decades after the grisly death of her parents. Her father shot her mother, then himself, in front of Rhonda when she was 14, rendering her paralyzed by fear. She began to notice that many people had traumatizing events in their lives. Not everyone made decisions based on fear. She decided to research what made the difference and wrote the book on the subject entire, ent sorry, titled Fearless Living. Um, okay, so going back to what I said in the last video, <coughs> it's about living your life and not allowing your fear to inhibit your ability to live, right? Um, so in that, in that instance, right, they were talking about dogs and the fear of dogs. Um, the dog bit you, you put a boundary down, you don't like dogs. You stay away from dogs, right? Easier said than done, but you can deal with it, right? There's ways to go about it. When it comes to adoptees and living, especially um, adoptees that were, like myself, that were, <coughs> excuse me, adopted at birth, um, there's no pre- trauma self right because we have our brains are rewired to be hyper vigilant in the sense that everything um affects us whether we realize it or not now can you overcome it of course we can right that is the point of healing that is the point of your journey that is why we are here right that's the point of my channel we want to work on our own journey right so as i said in one of my videos you know breaking it down and realizing that hey no matter what it doesn't matter right it doesn't matter if my adoptive parents try to take credit you know, will it bother me? Of course. But did they do the work? No. Will it matter if my my biological parents take credit? No. Because, again, they didn't do the work. I did it. Right? 
So stop living in that fear and do what you enjoy, right? I know it's easier said than done. It definitely took me a long time to come to this. Um, I will say that I, I came to this prior to returning to therapy, okay? Like, making that clear. But you got to get into that mindset of if you want something to get done, you got to do it. If you're going to enjoy something, right? So, like, say you are a big um, gamer, right? And you, you, you enjoy playing ga video games, whether it's for fun or you want to make it into a career, do it. Nobody's going to stop you. Now, will people look at you weird because like, oh, you play video games for a living? Maybe. People are going to look at everyone weird, right? I, I get comments all the time like, oh, you're, you know, oh, you're a book nerd or oh, you're, you know, a Disney adult, or, oh, you love cats, and so I don't take you seriously. You know what? They're going to find any excuse to not take me seriously, period. And if it was flipped on them to something that they they like or they enjoy, then maybe they would realize. They just want an excuse to to tear people down, okay? And... I'm here to tell you that get out of that mindset. You got to do you. We I'm I'm going to be here for you. I'm going to be your cheerleader. I'm going to be your support team. Um you know, build up, let's build up a connection, let's build up a team. You know, celebrate. If you are you know, I know change is sometimes really hard, right? But if you, if you want to move, if you want a new relationship, a new career, go back to school, whatever it may be, you want to make changes in your life, do it. Celebrate it. It could be something so small as, you know, um, this seems so silly. <laughs> Just going to let you guys know. Um, uh. I had a weird thing about, like, I love pie, don't get me wrong, but, like, making pie was one of the bigger things that I, like, feared in baking. And then, when I went to culinary school and I did it, it wasn't so bad. It wasn't bad at all. It was actually quite easy. Now, am I good at making pie? Not necessarily. I mean, pie is good, but I'm not, like, intricately making designs. You know what I'm saying? Um, but that's okay, because I also want to add that practice makes perfect. So whatever it is, go for it. Have fun. Do your thing. Celebrate the little things. Change the mindset and be that supportive person. All right? Anyway, I will see you guys tomorrow for the next video.